Hi, Micro Ponte here and I'm again at my favorite lake uh, as you can see and today I want to look for microscopic worms because I've already found a few of them uh, some time ago and I hope that I'm able to find them again today. The name of the worm is called Aeolosoma, Aeolosoma, a little bit difficult to pronounce. And it's a freshwater worm and they're tiny, around a millimeter or two millimeters long. And I was looking for some algae because they like to live in algae. So I was walking along the shore of the lake a little bit and I couldn't find any algae. So I had to change uh, the position a little bit, the place. And over there um, I saw some plants growing in the water and I was hopeful here. Maybe I can find some algae here um, and yes there it is there is some green stuff floating around here I was totally happy I was successful and I was actually hoping to find the worms in there so I put uh, put on down my jar and I simply collected some of the algae and simply grabbed them and put them into the jar so that I can take it home and put it under my microscope and another sample just carefully take it along um, yeah that's basically the easiest way of, of sampling, just to use your fingers. And that's plenty of material right now. It's almost like a small aquarium. It doesn't look like much, but actually it's full of life. And here I took some of the algae and I tapped it on the slide and I was kind of hoping that this way I can also get some of the, the worms uh, free. And yes, here they are. I have uh, found two of them here. And look how they're crawling around and yeah, looking for food. And uh, you can also see that they have bristles, little hair on the side. Uh, so this is the reason, one of the reasons why scientists weren't quite sure into which group they belong. But what they do is, is they uh, eat uh, algae which is growing on the surface. I changed now the lighting of the microscope. Now you can see that their stomach is green and it's green because of all of the food all of the algae that they, they have eaten and uh, yeah they're simply floating around moving around now looking for food and the question is now how do they reproduce um, and the interesting thing is is that uh, they primarily reproduce asexually. What this means is the following, is, is that when they are large enough, they start to fragment, they start to separate, so they fall apart essentially, and then of the different parts, uh, this is where they form individual worms. So they have an amazing ability to regenerate. I didn't try it out yet, but I think one of the next experiments that I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna cut one of those guys apart and I'm gonna see whether the two parts are actually able to continue to live on on their own. In any case uh, they are now still moving along and I was kind of hoping to see them mate but that is not how they reproduce because uh, they release uh, sperm and egg cells into the water and as a matter of fact scientists have never seen them mate before um, and uh, one of the reasons is, is because uh, fertilization apparently occurs outside of the body or maybe inside of the body, but then in this case, uh, the gametes are being taken up uh, from, from the outside. So unfortunately, there this is something that they have not um, observed yet. And what I've done now is, is I have restricted the movement a little bit by squeezing the little worm between two cover glasses. You see on the top and the bottom, there are these two horizontal lines. These are the edges of the cover glasses. So it cannot move completely freely. So it's moving along the edge of the cover glass, trying to avoid the air bubbles. These are the round things. They're going back and forth between the air bubbles. And yeah, it's still looking for food. Um, and um, sooner or later, as a matter of fact, I realized that it was it reached the edge of the cover glass. Yep, and now it's out. It went down and then it turned back up again and went right back in. It didn't like it there so much, right? Um, so yeah, going up again, all the way back and back again into the narrow passage. Yeah, and so what I've done next is the following. Um, yeah, back when bright field and what you see on the left, this thing that's moving, that is a gigantic air bubble moving in because the water is evaporating and it's pushing along the little worm. Look at this, yeah, it's moving relentlessly. It's almost like walls closing in on you. Oops, there's another one on the right. Uh oh, what's gonna happen now? Um, it's gonna be squeezed between two air bubbles. Look at this. And this actually shows how incredibly flexible those little worms are. It's totally restricted in movement. It's totally squeezed now, but look how flexible they are. Yeah, they really totally adapt to the shape of the air bubbles. Now that's a little at a higher magnification. Everything's still moving. It's trying to escape, can't escape because the air bubbles, um, yeah, squeeze it. 
And then I said, okay, well, what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm, I'm just going to look at it a little bit in more detail using dark field illumination again. You can see the green stomach. Um, you can also see that there's some pigmented dots on the bottom. The, the part of the worm is actually pigmented with dots. And I said, okay, um, I think I've got to relieve the worm a little bit. So I added a little bit more water um, and uh, this uh, caused the air bubble to go away and this freed the little worm again. And it was able to move away and escape uh, without being harmed. Yeah, so it uh, kind of moved away very quickly then. I said, ah, I didn't like that so much, okay? And then look where it tried to go then. You will never guess. I didn't like it, ah, finally free. Now I'm, I'm, I'm off now. And now it tried to actually squeeze itself beneath the cover glass. That's a tight squeeze. Look at this, it's really narrow there, much more narrow than above, but it really tried to get away from that. Now that's time lapse now, of course, four times faster. Um, and as a matter of fact, it did escape uh, in the totally unusual way yeah so the the thing that you see on the on the left side this uh, black thing that is one of my hair okay that's a hair so you can actually see how small these worms are compared uh, to human hair yeah and now it's squeezed between the hair and the cover glass and there is also an air bubble again luckily the hair prevented the air bubble from continuing its movement so the little worm is uh, safe again yeah and yet another one here oh i was playing around with those worms look how the worm is trying to hold back and push back the ear bubble which is moving forward. Uh, it's way too weak. And it's trying to squeeze its head between the cover glass and the ear bubble. No hope here. It's simply not strong enough. Yeah, trying on the other side. No, it's not gonna work. And it's trying to use its whole body to push the ear bubble back. No, it doesn't work. And you look, 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 the air, the, it's getting more, narrow, more and more narrow. Okay, wow, what's, what's, what's going on here? Because the two cover glasses are converging and they almost touch each other. Aha, uh -huh, help is coming, help is coming. You need any help? Nah, I'm not gonna do that. It says, okay, turns, uh, turns around. Uh, well, turns back, wants to help, can't help because not, not enough space. So it decided, well, huh, I think maybe it's better to escape than to push back the ear bubble, okay? And now there are, wow, three worms in here, three little worms, and the air bubble is pushing forward, and they're trying to escape on the other side on the left, and you know what, not enough space. Wow, they try to get out there and can't because the opening, the little gate, the door is way too narrow, and two of them are trying to squeeze themselves through this narrow hole, doesn't work, okay? Wow, it's, it's getting tight. Now that is a tight squeeze, look at this. Now the other one is trying to push forward. No, let me go ahead, I wanna be first. It's trying to push forward, but no chance here. It's way too narrow. Um, yeah, you see that <laughs> it's way too narrow. It's not gonna work. And there's an air bubble anyway, also on the way, way on the left side. So it wouldn't make much sense anyway to go out here. Wow, that is a tight squeeze. Now there are three of them compressed together. Okay, what about the other one? Wow, look, <laughs> now it's able to hold back <laughs> the air bubble because there's not enough space and everything's uh, compressed. You can see all of the organs still moving and they're trying to escape, it doesn't work. You know, on one hand, on one, one side the ear bubble, on the other side uh, the opening which is too small, pushed together, compressed together. So I said, well, I don't know, how long am I gonna watch this? And so I decided, well, I'm gonna add a little bit of water again, I'm going to free them so that they can continue to live on happily ever after. So I added a little bit of water and uh, this caused the air bubble to retract, to retreat, and uh, this also freed the little worms again. And they, now they have again enough space yeah, to, move, to move ahead and to move back. Yeah, okay, that is, uh, what did I do with the worms afterwards? Well, <laughs> no, I did not kill them. I did not chop them apart to see whether the different parts are able to live on their own. Um, I put them back into the jar, <laughs> okay, so. And there were quite a lot of these uh, actually in the jar, a lot of them, really. Um, as a matter of fact, also, Iolosomas are, are very common um, freshwater worms. There are around three, 30 species of them. Um, and uh, they can be found, uh, yeah, pretty much uh, all around the world. Yeah, and they're quite amusing to, to observe, I think, because they are so flexible. And one of the things I did not mention is, is that their head is uh, covered with little moving hair with little cilia. Well, this one is trying to squeeze through and no, that's not a good idea. It's not gonna work, it's way too tight. Yeah, But it doesn't know that, yeah. I don't know. 
Um, I don't know whether you should actually, uh, whether they actually have an instinct really. So now I've separated the, the cover glasses. Mm, yeah, or it's a fully automated uh, responses that they have. But in any case, uh, they seem to respond in an, yeah, in, a, yeah, in almost in a meaningful way. But I don't think that they actually have a form of intelligence in that sense because their nervous system is, is quite simple. But uh, they do already have uh, something that we call a head. Uh, and this actually allows them to sense different chemicals and to move uh, towards and away from different substances. So that's everything uh, for today again. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you liked it. And uh, see you again next time. And of course, as always, happy micro-punting. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>